Well, viewers, I just got back from another ride, and I was just bragging about not having any problems. Well, let me turn off this light. Come on, go off. Well, uh, what happened was I was on the sidewalk mode, and I um, opened up the throttle a little bit, and uh, I let off of it, and it just kept going. It, it was like full throttle. Just, took off on me so I instead of hitting the off switch I pulled on the brake and guess what happened when I did that I can find it there it is I broke the chain I mean I broke it look at that thing so uh the master link didn't break, but that broke. So I got another, you know what? I think I'm just gonna order a new chain. Not even mess with it. So I gotta buy a new chain. Um, I gotta find out why it did that, because it kept doing it. Even when the, let's see now. Now I can't get it to duplicate. So it's got to be a, a short in a wire somewhere. Well, viewers, I went ahead and I checked all the sprockets, all the on the cogs to make sure that I didn't chip any of the the teeth off. And they checked out okay, even on the uh, sprocket. And then the other thing I want to make sure on the sprocket that it didn't get bent. And it didn't. So that's good. Years, there's nothing worse than inter, uh, an intermittent problem that you cannot duplicate. So, diagnosing this problem, I came up with some possibilities. Number one, it could be hooking up two throttles may not be a good idea. But I tend to believe that's not the problem because these are only inputs. That's all they are. It shouldn't have a problem or two we got a short somewhere in the wiring or three the twist throttle is defective and it's intermittent or four god forbid the speed controller so um there we have it so i was looking around on the bike and I do remember when I laid the wires for the throttle and all that, it went in between this motor plate and the frame here. Now, I can move these wires around. I don't feel anything that's tight that would cause chafing, but I'm gonna go ahead and unplug the wires underneath, undo the strap, pull the wires out and inspect the wires, make sure I don't have any chafing. If I have chafing, then that would probably was the problem. So we'll need to fix it and reroute the wires a little bit better. That's the only thing I can do. I uh, did everything else I could possibly think of to check. All the, all the wiring checks good. So uh, the chain will be here today. So I'm hoping to get the chain back on. I took this sprocket off and stuff. I'm adjusting the axle a little bit. It was a little loose. It had a little bit of play going back and forth, about a quarter inch. I didn't tighten up the uh, collar tight enough. So the axle wanted to run out against the other collar on the end. But we got it. I'm just having a hell of a time with this brake drum because the amount of pressure that was put on the keyway and the and the drum and the set screws, it's really galled up. I'm trying to break it loose now. So it's a little hard to do with the wheel on it. So I may have to take off the wheel in order to drive it off. Because I want to drive it all off. I want to clean up the axle and put it all back together. Well, viewers, we went ahead and pulled out all the wires. I pulled these all out and inspected them for chafing. And there's no chafing. And, uh... And when they're in there in the proper order, there's plenty of room in there. It, there's nothing binding on the wires whatsoever. 
but when these were stuck in there it was kind of making them wad up a little bit so we're gonna route these these are the optional wires I don't need I'm gonna leave the connectors on it because if I decide I want to sell the speed controller or something you know people see a bunch of leads cut off of it they're gonna go I don't want it so we're gonna leave them on there we're just gonna put some shrink tubing over it just to kind of cover them up a little bit because see some of those leads are exposed so we're gonna take care of that and this seems to be okay I didn't see any any major issues I looked in there for any kind of a burr or anything on the plate that might penetrate the wire but I don't see anything no well, viewers we got the uh, <clears throat> optional wires so I got them all um, he shrinked up and um, so instead of putting them over on this side and making these wad up this side's a lot larger we'll just go around this away and then tie them up underneath so that's how we're going to deal with that and we just need to go ahead and put these back and plug these back in tie it up those wires well viewers we got the new chain on it came today and i got it all hooked up so twist throttle good thumb throttle good so we're ready to take this out for a test ride tonight and see how it works and uh, see what happens um, if it happens again the only other thing I can think of is this twist throttle has an intermittent problem with it and we need to replace it but I don't Whoa, just what I found out. It's in the steering. It's the twist throttle, uh, the thumb throttle. So I gotta find out where that is, what that, where that short is. There's a short here. All right, awesome. We can fix that. Well, viewers, it seems like we have found the culprit. Or where the problem lies is right there. Uh, unfortunately, uh, it's inside the jacket. So if I twist this just a certain way, you now it won't do it. There you go. So it's right in here where the problem lies. Well, viewers, I went ahead and uh, stripped off the jacket and exposed that area. And you see that black wire? That's the ground wire. And it looks like it's partially broken. So you bend it enough, it probably disconnects the ground and uh, this thing takes now, off. Just to check. Let's turn on the system and see if uh, playing with that wire does anything. Yep. Definitely well, this viewers, wire. We got the repair job all finished up. It works. We solved the problem. I'm very pleased. Uh, Nothing worse than an intermittent problem. You don't know where it's coming from. And then finally, bada boom, bada bang, it's there and you find it. So I guess I can say I was lucky. Well, viewers, I just want to point out this isn't the best repair job in the world. But it gets me back on the road. I do have another uh, brand new thumb throttle to put on it. I probably will put that on there when I have the time. But for now, to get me on the road, this will work. I just want to point out the fact that this was self-inflicted. Uh, when I set up the wire, I didn't realize when I turned it all the way over to this way, it was pulling on the wire really, really bad. Bad enough to pull the wire apart, and it happened to be the ground wire. And, uh, and so when you turned it, it pulled the wire apart, and then this thing would go into uh, just start taking off on me 
So it was self-inflicted. So I do have another thumb throttle, but like I said, we're gonna leave this one on for now so we can get some miles on it. Uh, there is a, a brake cutoff switch for the motor, but I don't have a brake light switch hooked up to it yet. I'll be doing that when I do my lighting system for my brake light. So once I get that set up, then I'll probably will hook up that, that cutoff for the motor because when that happened, I wasn't expecting it and it scared the hell out of me. I didn't know what the heck was going on. Luckily, it happened in a, in a part of the sidewalk where there was no pedestrians, nobody's in my way, and I was able to react and uh, take care of the problem. I had to pedal it home for about a mile, but no big deal. Um, but definitely scared the crap out of me. <laughs> wasn't expecting that to happen. So anyway, it's ready to go back on the road again. Um, we're gonna start working on this uh, lighting system next. Well viewers, I got all the stuff out for the light bar, the front light bar, and I got all the stuff out for the internal um, lighting system that we're gonna be implementing on the bike, but we're gonna just do a step at a time so I can ride the bike. So the first thing I want to do and the first priority is to get the front light bar on the bike. So how this is going to work, if you, this piece right here is for a water bottle cage holder that mounts to your handlebar. Then you mount your cage to this side or anything else you can think of. These things are pretty handy. They're not plastic. They're made out of, uh, I'm gonna say aluminum. Uh, they're well made, they're metal, so they're not gonna break. And uh, let me kind of give you an idea of what, what our plan is. To start out with, on the front of the bike, we have I'm going to use this as a pointer. We have tabs on the front of the bike here and over there. And what we're going to do is we're going to cut this at 13 inches and we're going to bolt it right to that tab just like that. We're going to make a right and we're going to make a left. And we're going to bolt them up. And when we bolt them up, we want to make sure that they're perpendicular, you know, they're level, they're straight. And then after we do that, now you're probably wondering, why am I making it so high? Well, the reason is because there's going to be a, a LED blinker going right there and the wire is going to go through the hole there. And then this is the bracket that's going to get attached to this uh, angle. And then it goes through the pipe and it holds the lighting system. So that's the concept. Let's see if it's going to work. Well, viewers, we got the uh, front light bar on. You have to excuse my dog. He's having a panic attack. Every time we have a thunderstorm, he has his fear, so if you hear a lot of panting, that's just him. In any event, we got the uh, the light bar all done. Um, we did change a few things. Uh, we didn't go as high as I wanted to go because this uh, L is too thin. It, it'd be too flimsy. So if I want to go higher, I need to go to a thicker, uh, I think this is 1 16th. I think I'm going to need to go at least um, an 8th inch thick uh, L. Uh, I think if I do that, then I can go up higher. So for now, we made it at 7 and a half inches. Uh, I can always put a blinker right here and here or here and here. We can figure out where the blinkers to go. We can even put them right here. 
depends what you're looking for. So all the lights are on. These are the lights that are going to be wired in to the uh, motorcycle switch. These will be uh, hooked up later. You can see they're just wrapped up right now. Uh, we just want to get the weight on it to see how it performs because uh, this is rack and pinion steering. So we want to make sure that the whole part loose with it like so so it should work so what we need to do now is take it out for a test ride but we got a thunderstorm so it's gonna have to wait but we'll include that in the video uh, we do have this light hooked up right now it's being charged but it's very bright we'll see that uh, when we take our early morning ride um, so if this holds up to the vigorousness of the writing then what we'll do is we'll take it apart and we're going to paint all that uh, aluminum we're going to uh, wire brush it and then we're going to paint it with the candy orange and uh, clear coat so it'll look like a brushed copper orange kind of thing we'll do the pipe but not these these will stay black so it'll look pretty awesome when it's done so let's see if it holds up it's all made out of real thin alum aluminum even the pipe is very thin it's only a 16th inch thick three quarter inch pipe so it's pretty light it's pretty lightweight i was trying to keep it lightweight as much as possible so in the lights these lights are pretty lightweight these are led lights by the way they have high low and flash a built-in chip for each one i'll explain more about that as we uh, get the lighting system put on it but this is the first step start mounting all the things that you want and where you want them and once we get everything mounted that we need to get mounted then we can wire it all up but right now this will get me uh, legal i'll have a good light on the front and i got some temporary lights for the back and uh, we'll be working on the back part uh, after we get this all done, which will probably, I'll probably do that in another week or so. I'm going to enjoy writing this thing after all the stuff I went through. So, um, so we got rid of all those battery straps that were here. Now we'll, these are the things we actually are going to be leaving. There's the water bottle cage, this the little glove compartment. Uh, this will be on there. That's the battery pack for that light. That'll be staying. Cause I'm gonna, I wanna make sure I have a backup light. Cause you never know, something could go wrong with the system and I could be out in where it's real dark and I'll need that light. Or maybe these lights aren't bright enough and I need that extra third light to light it up. Cause this, this light is extremely bright. I can already tell that I'm gonna need to put another a rubber shim underneath that to make it tighter. It's too loose. It's gonna, what's gonna happen? It's gonna fall down like that. Either that, you mount it upside down. Either way, it's still gonna tilt, tilt down. So it needs to be shimmed up. So we'll take care of that. But it's done. Um, we're gonna put some end caps on on the ends of the tubes. I got them. I just haven't put them in yet. Uh, we'll probably do that after we get it all painted, but that's what it looks like. Okay, we're fixing to go on a ride here. Uh, test ride for the light bar there. You see how bright that bicycle light is. You'll know, see more about that. We'll get on the road, get on some dark roads here. That's the one right Okay. I'm flint snowing. Now, turn on the system here. 53.8 volts. I notice I've been losing a little bit of my voltage. A little bit of capacity. It's usually at 54 volts. 
for your backing. I'll pull it. Okay, I may have to adjust the light a little bit. I don't know. Yeah, we're gonna adjust it up a little bit. That's a new chain, so it's gonna make a little bit of noise until it breaks, until it stretches out. So I know I have to readjust it after this ride. chain when I put the new chain on the thousand watt when I first put it on did the same thing so I lubricated it so after we make about the second chain adjustment on it it should quieten up and it should free will a little bit better already starting to quiet, quiet down a little bit. Oh, well, light bar is holding up pretty well on the street. Uh, let's find out about the sidewalk abuse. Cause it's always bumpy. Like right here, there's a bump. to recheck that alignment on the chain that might not quite be right you know trying to find the sweet spot oh yeah that light bar is staying right there and you notice they got the uh, other headlights on there. Those are the ones that are going to be hooked up to the uh, street lighting system. I just put them on there just to see if they were going to hold up because they are a little heavy. Well, that's pretty much the end of a sidewalk mode. Come up here and get out on the bike lane because I've got my street here. Switching the thumb throttle. Seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty. One. Twenty-three. Four. Okay, it is a little bit slower because that chain is a little bit tight. So we'll, the speed will come up. My top speed so far has been uh, 27. Throttle, I can actually feel a little bit of G-force pushing me back into the seat. I'll go a little bit further. 
supposed to turn there, but I'm gonna go down here and turn around. storm come through here so a lot of branches and stuff out on the highway I guarantee you those have thorns in them and I mean big ones at 22, 23 miles an hour, no problem. Well, I will certainly try to sweeten up that chain a little bit. Checking out the, uh, going over those bumps and stuff, that, that light is, it's holding sturdy, so. That's good. I'm looking down at it, I don't know if you can see it or not, but it's sturdy. This thing just accelerates. Like a little go-kart. No viewers, the light bar is a success. Um, I'm probably, I'm going to see if I can get some uh, thicker, so I can go higher, so I can put that, uh, I like it to be a little bit higher, it's a little bit too low. And I like to be able to put on uh, the blinkers on the uh, ends. Uh, but this will serve me fine for now. So I'll probably go ahead and, and just paint this to get an idea what it'll, look, what it'll look like. But we'll leave it for now. But when we get to the uh, wiring up the bike and uh, doing up all the blinkers and stuff, then I'll make the change. Um, the chain was pretty tight uh, after the ride. And um, it's still, it's, it's super tight right there. So I need to uh, readjust the chain and um, get it in a sweet spot. 
but I guarantee after about a hundred miles we'll get this chain in sweet so I went through the same ordeal with the other one when I had a new chain on the other motor um, took a while for it to break in and then finally it just stretched out and uh, once it stretched out it seemed to quieten up quite a bit Okay, uh, for the tail lights, uh, we have LED lights. We have uh, one for the for the left, one for the right, and one that goes in the center. The center one, when you turn on the blinker, it dots out this way to turn left, for example, or it dots out this way to turn right. It also has a brake light and a tail light, so we'll have one, two, three brake lights. And how we plan on doing this, you know, is I have this little cutout right here or dotted out. Well, what we plan on doing is cutting a slot here and here and just here across and down. So it'll slide right underneath here. It'll fit underneath this speed controller, no problem. As you can see, it slides right underneath there and uh, it's going to be about that long on each side there's the dot for the other side so basically when you slide it in it's going to go up against this bar like that but up on top of the motor frame and then we're going to put tech screws in the, through the motor frame to screw this down with and then we'll just glue our because the uh, lights the LED lights are the peel and stick and we'll just peel it stick it put a hole peel and stick it put a hole peel and stick it and put a hole and then we run the wires behind so that's the plan so that will be the next thing we'll be doing in the next episode uh, Hope you all enjoyed this video. Um, I wasn't planning on doing this big ordeal on the uh, electrical, but it's something that happens, so I keep my videos real. I don't try to hide anything. So if you like what you see, subscribe. Uh, if you're already a subscriber, make sure you mash that notification bell. And that's the same thing for you newcomers. Make sure you smash that notification bell so you'll be notified on this project. It's almost done, but we're not quite there yet. So if you have any uh, concerns, complaints, uh, criticisms, suggestions, comments, questions, whatever, put it down in the comment section below. I'd be more than happy to read those. Until next time, like I always say, if I can do it, you could probably do it better.